What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan, and today I'm back with another KSW preview as KSW 90 goes down in Warsaw over in Poland on January 20th, the first show back for KSW, obviously, this year. And uh, it is... Uh, I, I think it's a good setup show again for the rest of the year. I spoke about a similar thing for one championship um, uh, last week or the week before about how maybe there isn't the, the big stars, the, the Paranasses and others out there, but there is a few people uh, on this card. And, and, and I suppose there is a couple of uh, a couple of the big name stars, which we, we will get to. But uh, there's a few people on this, I think especially in the main event, which we could be hearing uh, a lot more from uh, in, the, uh, <laughs> in the year to come if results go right. And um, as I said in, in that one as well, like there's... Um, a whole host of fighters that you look at at the start of last year, you know, when I was doing my um, my recap uh, of the year videos, who you would kind of think like, is that person gonna make it to a level of where you're, you know, you're talking about him at the end of the year? And a lot of them do, you know. So okay, a lot of people don't as well, but it's interesting to to kind of see. Uh, one one of the things that I have uh, uh, kind of set myself to do uh, at the start of this year after doing those previews is to kind of pick out someone, pick out maybe one or two people. Uh, and, I, and, you know, I'm not looking to be a genius here or anything. I want to do it after the fight. So let's say someone has, you know, a massive uh, co-main event win or a massive win on the undercard, and you kind of think like, okay, well, that person is, you know, let, let's say they're in the UFC. They're on the verge of the, uh, the, the rankings, or if they got, you know, a short notice fight or a big fight, they could get in there and they could start climbing. They're a person who's willing to fight regularly and willing to fight anyone and everyone. That's, those are the sort of people you should be uh, kind of looking out for. Um, and you see, you know, you see them. Uh, I, th- I think it's kind of easier to see them in the likes of KSW, the likes of one championship where there isn't maybe as many fighters, although KSW has a, a good number of fighters. Um, so... I think I, I like that. Like, I, if you think about it from last year, like, say someone, uh, the, the name I always speak out over in uh, K, uh, K George is Liam Gittins, a guy who was a good fighter, was on a bit of a, a losing streak a few years ago, and he went into this year, just destroyed everyone, became champion. And you look back at him and say, well, maybe maybe we should have seen it coming with the performances earlier in the year. So that's what I'm looking for here uh, in, in one of these. And I think, again, with KSW, you know, I think. Um, a lot of the uh, award shows came out obviously over the last month or so, and you know, in, in most of the award shows, there's like the uh, the award for are they not the, the what's going to be the biggest story of next year? And I think for almost everyone, it is uh, in mixed martial arts, it's PFL Bellator, who's the number two sort of thing. Now, if you uh, if you widen that a small bit and talk about, I have a great podcast over in Shorter called The Chasing Pack. If you talk about The Chasing Pack a little bit, I think KSW are always a name that should be involved in it, always a name that should be mentioned, and a name, honestly, that isn't mentioned enough. Because if you talk about stability, the ability to make money, the ability to pay people well, the ability to put on good, very good fights, the ability to keep their talent and have very good talent... KSW has probably been the best promotion in the world outside of the UFC um, over the last, what, five, six years. Like, now, now that Bellator has gone, I suppose Bellator would have taken uh, that. But I, I think um, I think KSW have, have been there. You know, we've seen one championship, even at times it's been a struggle, but they've, you know, they're doing a, a good job of that too. You know, most of the time in signing some good people as well, including Saldich from KSW. But I, I really think we need to give KSW... Um, more love and more appreciate them a little bit more as well because KSW is not the sort of promotion you look at and go oh, well you know we, we see new promotions coming up all the time you're thinking how can they sustain this how can they keep going that way and then you know they invariably don't but KSW is not that promotion at all it's you know it's massive in uh, obviously Eastern Europe and Poland um, and it's it's massive for the fighters and it's really good a really good place for the fighters to be you know i've heard some great stories about fighters there and they're you know they get offers from the ufc even or other places and they're thinking like why 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 would i like why why would i go and do that to fight for way less money uh you're not going to get as much acclaim either unless you go to the very very top in the ufc so ksw is a is a great place uh, to be as a fighter, and it will continue to be. And I'm looking forward to co- uh, continuing my coverage of uh, of KSW into uh, into the new year. So let's uh, let's get into KSW 90, and let's talk about uh, 
let's talk about this card. It, it's, as I said, not the, the most stacked card uh, in the world. I believe there is 10 or 11 fights uh, on it uh, as we speak. Now, I'm recording this obviously a little bit early to get it uh, edited and get it out and stuff. Uh, but So there might, you know, maybe something will, will, will come on it again afterwards. But um, I would say there are a, a bunch of fighters on this who could be the person I was talking about earlier on, who could be the person who goes from, you know, let's say you look at someone like uh, Bartosz um, Fabinski, who's 16 and 5, who could go towards the end of the year and become, you know, 18 and 5 and be in the title mix. Or, you know, the the, the heavyweights, when you have Phil Freeze there and he's beating everyone and you're a heavyweight and you're looking good and you're a good prospect or, you know, you've someone who's gone on a winning streak, you're always going to be uh, involved in that talk just because Phil DeVries is beating everyone. Uh, so I think looking at the heavyweight fights as well, he's always good to do that. And let's start off with that heavyweight fight um, and and the, the, the main event, obviously, um, uh, Arek uh, Vasek against Ivan uh, Vesosvic, who's names i pronounce beautifully there shout out sean Dini again as always who helps me with the uh, uh with everything K- ksw concerned the names the the venues the dates the the, the fighters every everything uh i, I really appreciate shawnee and uh he always uh he's always a great help with this so shout out sean Dini. if you're not following at Dini rants over on twitty Tw- twitty twitter x please do um i i'm very 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 interested in seeing the three and all um uh, Arik Vashvek. So um, he is a former kickboxer. He beat Batter Harry. If you look it up on uh, on YouTube, the uh, I believe the full fight is there. I was, I was watching some highlights of it anyway, but I, I believe the the full fight is there as well. Um, and uh, you know, a world class kickboxer by all accounts, fought in glory. As I said, beat Batter Harry, and he's coming in now, thirty one years of age, into MMA. Um, and he's looking, you know, he's looking to go to the top. His opponent, even as I said, nineteen fights uh, into his career, has fought, you know, some very, very good people uh, in that run as well as as you tend to do. Being, a, you know, being a heavyweight fighter on uh, on that side of the world, you know, people would know the name Victor Peshta. He fought him a while back. Um, uh, he, he lost that fight, but you know he fought the likes of Dario Stosic as well a while back. But he's win streak at the moment. He's on a six fight win streak. People probably know Ali Thompson. He's beaten him, Geronimo dos Santos as well. I watched that fight. It was a bit of an a, a bit of an odd one. I it was. It says here it's a doctor stoppage. He he did tap out, but I think he got injured after like a submission attempt or something like that. It, it definitely was an odd one that one anyway. But still, he was you know he was it was yeah. It was an interesting fight. I was going to say he was winning the fight. He kind of was and kind of wasn't. I think he was um, probably doing more damage off of his back. But anyway, we, we leave that to a side for a second. But, you know, a guy who's been around in MMA for a long time, debuted in 2012, you know, where uh, uh, Arek, whose nickname is uh, Hightower for obvious reasons, uh, only debuted there in, in 2022. So, uh, and, you know, he'd won fight in 2022 and, and two fights uh, two fights last year. A very interesting thing, though, right? You you think okay, he's three and zero in his career, and fought guys who do uh, like a lot of kickboxing, and uh, I don't want to say he's had favorable matchups, but uh, you could say that, right? He's fought lads who have tried to take him down a little bit, but are probably better as kickboxers themselves, and did a bit of uh, did a bit of striking with him. But that point is is um, not invite here for a second because. You look at those fights, and I think in all of them, uh, may- maybe not the psycho one. Actually, I didn't see the psycho one. I, got, I couldn't find it. But the Mosley fight and the Sahara fight, he got hurt and hit in hard in both of them. The Mosley one especially almost got knocked out and came back to win the unanimous decision there. The Sahara one as well, uh, he got hit in that one. So this is not exactly like a kickboxer who's coming in and just styling on people and destroying them. He's getting hit. And I think he, he gets hit because he is so happy to actually go in there and so confident to go in there and throw his strikes um he is uh, you know and i don't want to take away to take away from him by saying starting with the negative because he is a very 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 talented guy um for a heavyweight kick but like i started watching at the, at the start i i just looked up the two fighters and i started i started watching him before i actually realized it was a heavyweight I was looking at him, and you know, he's he's one of those guys. You think, you know, okay, is, is he a light heavyweight? Is he a middleweight? What is he? And then you turn around, he's a heavyweight. Do you know? Because he's probably fighting another t- another tall guy. But when you see here the the height of him, 
He, do, he does not move like a heavyweight. He really, really does not move like a heavyweight at all. He's, he's, as I said, big and strong and powerful, but he's fast. And he throws that high kick really, really, really well. One of the things, my, my first note on, uh, on Eric is that he's definitely left-handed, right? He fights uh, out of the orthodox, but the way he throws that left hand is just... It's it's not a natural jab of someone who's like myself. Now I'm right-handed. I wouldn't, uh, you know, okay. If I was a world-class heavyweight striker, I wouldn't throw my jab as well as that because I'm just not naturally left-handed. You could just tell. You can just, and I'd love. Maybe I'm wrong now, but I, I would. I would guess I'm right. Uh, that hard left kick as well, just so so good. Um, this guy is a beast striking. And I think a lot of the people who end up actually just hitting him kind of get into this place where I'm going to have to do something here. I'm going to have to make this guy pay a little bit and just literally kind of wing in big overhands down through the middle and end up catching him. And that's that's the way to fight a guy like that unless you can wrestle him. Um, his body kicks, his leg kicks especially, are absolutely... Uh, they're, they're insane. Like, I, I don't think I've seen a fighter since, you know, maybe the days of Mark Hunt um, at heavyweight, throw, ki- throw one kick and buckle a person like he draws them. Unbelievable leg kicks. Like, it's, uh, I was watching one of his fights, uh, and I kind of forwarded into the second round just to, to see what he's like in the, uh, in the second round and, and see what he's like kind of carrying a bit of cardio with him and stuff. And honestly, I was watching about two minutes of the fight, and I thought I was watching a highlight reel because it was leg kick, stop leg kick stop leg kick stop and like leg kick fall down stop leg kick fall down stop you know over and over and over again that's the type of fighter he's and he makes you he makes you almost live in the pain <laughs> when he's fighting you because he, he will just hit you once and then kind of stop let you recover get back up again unbelievable and he's fighting out of uh fighting out of warsaw as well he's a, a sean denny tells me he's a massive leggy a warsaw fan so the crowd's going to be behind this but going to be behind it will be absolutely uh absolutely massive another part is well, i was talking to shani about this as well but I'm watching a few of his fights he's better on the ground than you'd expect out of a lad who's uh who's who's a three and all kickboxer um he went for um he went for like a couple of good sweeps off off his back. He looked like he was trying to set up a triangle and stuff. And he he's not one of these lads who gets taken down and it's like immediately like, oh well, this guy's screwed because he can't get his way uh, back to his feet. He he can and he did get his way back to his feet. And you know he usually ends up on his back as well from being knocked down rather than actually being taken down. And that's why I was kind of saying about maybe the the more favorable matchups. But um a guy as i said won't give up tries his best to get back as well and uh do, does it very well his opponent in uh even vitasovich um t- as i said same, same as him 31 years old fighting out of croatia um he is he's a former heavyweight champion i think in fnc um predominantly a kickboxer as well I think the the big difference here between these two fighters, uh, Ivan is a, a counter striker and Eric is a, an attacking striker. As I said, like just hands, legs, kicks from Eric. Whereas uh, Ivan is more of like the okay, come on, show me what you're gonna do. I'm gonna stand here and just counter you. And you watch uh, parts of his fights, or you watch whole fights of him, and he's very very. Um, staunch in what he does he doesn't really change you know he likes to counter the way he does it but and and he's very very good at it um very good high kicks he can hit hard um he's been been submitted um a good few times uh, if i'm uh, if i'm not mistaken he has he's been submitted five times uh, in his career now I, I don't think that'll necessarily uh, be the case here but the biggest his biggest issue it's funny you look at you look at Eric, you know the guy who's three and zero versus the guy who's eighteen fights, and you'd actually be more concerned about the takedown for um, Ivan Vatasevich than you would for Eric because, uh, in general, not necessarily in this fight, because his game is like as I said that outside counter game, but he doesn't circle enough for me. Uh, you know, at heavyweight it's going to be very very tough, but you know I always I always talked about Anthony Pettis with this. He just you know, didn't did not circle enough. There was a lot of backward movement, but it was to the fence, and he got taken down against the fence. Now, as I said, not an issue maybe in this fight. So I, I actually wonder how that will actually change um, 
the dynamic of the fight because a guy like him is not used to that. When he is pushed back, when you are such a good counter striker, you're used to being try you know, someone trying to take you down. Like Arek is going to be there for him to hit. So uh, that's where he's at his best. If people let him do that all the time, I'm sure he'd do very, very well. And that's exactly what he will be let do here. But what does Arek want to do? He wants someone to counter him so that there'll be openings there so he can hit him. Like this is going to be. Uh, Someone's getting knocked out here. Like, there's uh, there's no shred or doubt about that for me. Like, this is an attacking fighter who will throw all these shots out there against the counter fighter who waits for an attacking fighter to throw all these shots out there and then throws all of his shots out there. This is this is this is the perfect <laughs> match. Now, will some will someone change? Will someone do something different? Maybe will someone go for a submission or you know go for a takedown before it or something like that? May, now maybe maybe we'll see all that. But honestly, if you're to break down both of their games, this one is destined for. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think it's destined to go on too long. To be honest, if this uh let's say if this uh third round, I think I would be uh I'd be shocked. I'd probably be shocked if it's a uh, second round. To be honest, but yeah, your uh your attacking fighter against your counter fighter. I'm gonna go for uh, um. Uh, Arik Vasek, I, I think uh, I think his power will be a little bit too much, but he's been hitting all of his MMA fights so far. If Ivan can hit him, like he's powerful, Ivan, but I don't know if, if he is as powerful as some of the other guys maybe that he's fought. Nine KOs in, in 12 victories would suggest maybe I'm I'm wrong, but we will uh, we will see on that one. A, a fascinating fight that I'm really, really, really uh, looking forward to. Uh, over at KSW, uh, let's uh, let's jump into the uh, Coleman event then, and uh, and have a, a a quick chat about that. Uh, it is in the middleweight division, and it's uh, Bartosz Fabinski uh, against uh, Laid uh, Zeruni. Um, again, Fabinski, you know, one of these guys now who was in the UFC. Um, you know, one, you know, was was, was in the UFC, was in Cage Warriors, was you know, uh, out of the UFC, back in the UFC. And, like, he won a lot of fights over there. Like, he beat the likes of ML Mech, Hector Urbina, Darren Stewart. Uh, Darren Stewart, obviously, was in the Cage Warriors. Was that the, actually that Cage Warriors one? That was the one where they had a UFC fight on the Cage Warriors card during COVID, wasn't it? Yeah, that, 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 that's, I'm pretty sure that's it. But, uh, you know, he lost Andrew Muniz, uh, lost to Gerald Merchard, and he needed one fight outside of, um, of the UFC at the end of last year, now he's coming back over to KSW, and I'm sure you know when you have a name like this, when you you know this is his uh, this is his KSW debut, if I'm not mistaken, and you know you're from uh, you're from Poland as well. This is massive. I'm sure this is like probably a dream come true for him, and I'm sure <laughs> you know. He, as I said, he'd want to have done this, but I'm sure KSW would want to have him as well. And at 37 years of age, it's a big opportunity for him to get in that title mix straight away. Now, this is the perfect example of what I was talking about earlier on. If he's to win this fight, you know, maybe get on uh, a fight night in in um, in a couple of months' time, win that. You could, at the end of the year, maybe he need one more, maybe he won't. You could be talking about title fights for him you could be talking about big fights you know we know the big names in uh, in KSW or a lot of them are around the the, the middleweight welterweight light heavyweight sort of uh, area there and we don't we know we know that, that uh, people don't mind moving around weight classes as well so that's interesting um uh, uh Zaruni is then a guy who I've seen before uh he fought um Norbert Navigny Jr who in my opinion, is the best prospect in the world. So I watched a bit of him going into that fight, and do you know what? I was I was I was relatively impressed with him. He, look, he lost that fight as um, almost everyone does to Norbert Navigny Jr. because he's that good. But you look at you look at his record, right? And um, it's eleven and eight. And you might think to yourself, okay, maybe not the best record in the world. But look at some of the names this guy has fought down through the years, like. His third fight in, in his career, Faris Ziam, who's a, a very good fighter. As I mentioned, Norbert Navini Jr., one of the best prospects in the world. Tarek Suleiman. If you don't know Tarek Suleiman, you know that's that's a name from UAE Warriors, who is um, a very, very good fighter. He fought uh, Felix uh, Klinkhammer, who is one of these guys out, uh, one of these guys out of London shoot, who you know has fought in Aries a good few times in Octagon, and you know I, I believe let me just click here. Yeah, he is undefeated. Yeah, he's undefeated coming out of that gym, and you know. 
when you hear a guy with a name like Felix Klinkhammer coming out of uh, London Shoe Fighters, you know they're going to be a good fighter. So he's been in there with some very, very, very good guys. And, uh, you know, a lot of those losses are to good guys. Now he's coming off of, you know, two wins in a row over uh, in Brave. Uh, his last fight a guy against the guy who was, uh, I believe, was a 10-5 and five at the time. So um, uh, that was a good win, and his his opponent before that as well over a hexagon, uh, you know, was didn't have the best record in the world, but still you get I suppose back to winning ways with that one. Um, his game is is a very very interesting one. Um, in that, I would say he isn't the most uh, agile striker, but he when he puts on the pace, he's very 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 good. And if he can back you up and put that pace on you, he can be very, very, very good. But the fight with him wants to get to the ground. I was watching um, one of his fights recently, and he got he was in there with this absolute beast wrestler who just picked him up and threw him on the ground. I believe it was that hexagon fight I was talking about, uh, the Makima fight. Um, and every time he found himself in like a really bad position, he was just looking for submissions. I, I, he ended up uh, he ended up Kimura and him in that, and he has. Um, seven submission wins out of his 11 fin- out of his 11 wins three knockouts as well so he only went to the decision once that's the type of fighter he is uh, he's the type of fighter who will uh, you know he, he's been submitted six times as well so he, he'll either go out with his shield or on it and you know you have to admire that type of fighter as well 28 years old his first fight in KSW as well um, you know having fought in Bellator UAE Warriors and you know, Fabinski then on the other side of it, I, I think I think he will be a better striker, but I don't think he wants to play too much of a striking game uh, with Laid, where Laid can uh, get the initiative, if you want to put it that way. I think if he can keep him at, his end, at the end of his jab, you know, land a few one-twos, control the fight, I, I think he can win the fight that way. And I, I could see the whole fight going that way. But, you know, as we know with Fabinski, he's a judoka. Um... um and you know he loves the the kind of the, the fighting against the cage. He loves the clinch. Um, I, I I believe he's uh, he's one of the best top time records in the whole of the uh, the, the UFC. I, obviously, that's not my quote now. Sean, he was telling me, <laughs> telling me that. So um, yeah, he's he's. I watching the Gerald Marshart fight back, and his ability to get into that clinch, his ability to land an elbow as he gets inside in that clinch is very, very good. And I think, look, the two keys to victory for Fabinski in this one, in my opinion, if he can control that clinch, land damage when he gets in the clinch, but then control the striking as well around that, I think it won't be too hard for him here. Um, Zaruni just, he needs, he, what he really needs to do is get offense off. He, Almost turned this fight into, you know, a 28-year-old versus a 37-year-old. So I'm going to put a pace on here. And you can either live with that pace or you're not going to live with that pace, you know. Um, I, I don't think he has the ability to do that. I just don't think the game is strong enough for him to do that. The biggest issue for a guy... So the biggest issue for a guy with a game that is not as detailed as his opponent is that his opponent will be able to control him. There's there's no way of getting out of the control of your opponent. And I think that's going to be the biggest uh, issue for Zeruni in this one. And I think uh, Fabinski... Uh, I think Fabinski probably wins the uh, probably wins the, the decision uh, in uh, in this one. Um, maybe my favourite fight on the night... Uh, oh, no, no, the main, the main event is my favourite fight on the night. But uh, Damien Stasiak against Adam uh, Saldiev is, is a very, very good fight. Uh, in the uh, in in the featherweight division, we all know um, Saldin Parnas obviously is um, uh, is up fighting as welterweight and lightweight and uh, and everywhere else. And there will uh, there will be someone waiting for him, I suppose, when he comes back. And I suppose these two lads are fighting to be uh, in that picture. Look, they haven't had the best run over the last while. Stasiak, he won. Okay, he won his last fight at KSW eighty four, but he was on a two fight losing streak before that, losing to uh, Robert Ruhala and uh, Lamarius Kiev. Uh, but look, he's been in there with some of the best of them in KSW as well. You know, he fought Anton Rakic. He's in. People probably remember he was in the UFC as well before. For Brian Keller beat Davy Grant, which is a win that's just going to look better and better uh, all the time here. 
and uh, so Leave then the other side of it as well, seven and two, fighting out of uh, Warsaw. So he'll be the the big hometown, uh, the big hometown favorite there against the Lutz man. Um, he lost, as I said, he lost his last fight and he lost his first fight. So it was a seven fight win streak. Uh, in the middle of that, um, it was right, Daniel Rutowski. Uh, very unanimous decision the first kind of big name in his career so he'll want to bounce back uh, after that fight massively there um i would say about saldia if he is um i i i feel like it's hard to describe his game without being a bit mean to be honest because his game doesn't look amazing but it works for him you know he is a one-shot fighter he could he it's funny, you're like, I've never seen anyone get as off balance as he does. He kicks you, and he kind of gets off balance. He throws a punch, he backs up, he gets off balance. But it, it works for him, oddly. I don't know how it works for him, because he, he gets himself into clinches when he kind of doesn't need to be. Um, you know, he's he's built a little bit like Artem Lavov. You know, he's kind of the shorter hands and kind of the, the low, low shoulders. Um... Uh, it works for him again. I'll say it though. He's a good jab, uh, and he works himself into fights. Like he's a better second round fighter than he's a first round fighter. Um, one thing I would say about his game as well, like the f- the feints. He, uh, he's so, sometimes in 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 mixed martial arts we get taken away by uh, things, and I think feints are one of those things. Maybe some fighters get taken away by his feints work against him. He throws a feint, and his opponent throws and just punches him in the face. It's like. Your feints are not doing anything for you. Your feints are not setting up. It feels like, oh, look, I should throw a feint. I'm going to throw one. But no, I just, if the, I, I, what do I know? Like, But if I could give any piece of advice, just try, stop throwing those feints. Uh, Stasiak then on the other side of it. Obviously, you know, Saldeo 26, Stasiak 33 a little bit. More, uh, um, more uh, experienced there. And, uh, you know, we, we all know what Stasiak is like. 11 submissions, very, very good on the ground. Watching him back again, like, I would describe him as a Diego Sanchez type character, right? Maybe not the best athlete in the world, but like clearly a hard worker, clearly a guy who's kind of gotten the best out of himself. You know, he will have better cardio than you. He will jab you on the outside if it needs to be, and then he'll just jump in you. And that's how he has many, so many submissions, you know? Um, he's just an all-around MMA fighter. He's, he's the type of guy, you know, he's, he's the type of guy we saw a tough one, tough two, tough three, when we were on the, you know, the uh, normal people, if you train, like, really hard, you can become an MMA fighter type of thing. He's He is that type of guy, and I don't mean any disrespect by that in any way, shape, or form, but he's, like, he's clearly the hardest-working guy. He's 33 years of age. I wouldn't be surprised if he was still fighting at 43 years of age, you know, with, with knee braces on and everything like that. Um, it's it's an interesting fight to see who can uh, who can actually win it. Um, you know, Saldiev, his, his two losses haven't been by submission, you know, and he is... Good on the ground. Um, well, he's okay on the ground. He's a better better striker. I, I think if Cezia can take him down, he can get the submission. I'd be very interested to look at the betting odds here. I find, like, the other fights I can kind of... Uh, I have an idea of who I think will win. For this one, I'm really, really, really not sure, to be honest. Um, I think they have both methods of, of getting there. Like, I probably lean in Stasiak, and the reason I'm probably leaning lean in that is I don't know if Saldiev can actually um, control the fight um, sufficiently against someone like Stasiak. Actually, the odds are up here. Minus 200 for Stasiak, plus 150 for Saldiev. So, yeah, not a million miles apart, and I think the Stasiak one is the uh, the right pick there. The main event, actually, Arik and Ivan. Arik is the favorite, minus 163, plus 120 for, for Ivan. I'm, I'm going for Arik in that one. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll throw some of the rest of them at you uh, as we uh, as we go down here. Um, so yeah, those are, are, are I suppose the, the main fights uh, on KSW uh, ninety. I'll just run through some of the other ones here. Um, there's a catchweight fight at one six one. Uh, Ramzan uh, Jimbiev five and one against a seven one. Isaiah Ramos. Uh, Ramzan twenty four years of all of age. Fighting out of France, uh, I mentioned pa- uh, Saladin Parnas earlier on. He fights out of the same uh, place as Saladin. Very good uh, knockout artist. A lot of high kicks. Um, got a rear naked choke in his last appearance. Uh, Ramos, only 22 years of age. Uh, he trains out of Brazil, but he's from uh, Venezuela, I believe. Uh, took the fight in short notice. Very good with submissions, arm bars, rear naked chokes. Uh, not the biggest knockout artist in the world. So, you know, this is a, a BJJ artist versus... Uh, 
uh, a guy who's fighting on the ground. So we'll uh, we, we'll see how uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, there's no betting for this one yet, obviously, because this is uh, this fight has just changed. Um, I will. Uh, I, I I'll go with uh with with Zhimyev on that one uh just based on the short notice um in the bantamweight division in Werlison Martinez uh, against uh, Alexei uh, Polishuk um Martinez twenty eight years of age out of Brazil former title and challenger as we all know um he was the guy who was due to have the fight on the Coliseum too but got injured um uh against Parnas obviously very very well rounded um good kickboxing you know. Good wrestler, good submissions as well. It'll, it'll take Polish all he can do to win. Uh, fighting out of U- uh, from Ukraine, but fighting out of Poland. Great wrestler as well. Submission game uh, and big ground and pound. I- I'll go for I'll go for Martinez uh, in that one. That's an interesting one as well. I said about the featherweight division. You know who's going to be the next in line. Obviously, this this one is at bantamweight, I believe. But uh, who's going to be next in line for uh, for? Uh, at one of the divisions anyway <laughs> for for Parnas and maybe uh maybe Martinez could be that one if he gets a win there. Um, there is a, a female fight in at uh, Strawweight between Elena Wojniak against Alexander Tonsheva. Um, uh, Tonsheva, we people might remember her from uh, from Bellator. Also, very good uh, IMAF fighter back in the day. Um, against a kickboxer in uh, in Wojniak. Uh, but well, a kickboxer with she she can uh, that that's unfair. She's a, a more well rounded good you know uh, a good finisher as well. F- uh, used to fight in uh, in areas, but I, I like uh, I like Tancheva. She hasn't the best record in the world, but I, I'd fancy her going into that one uh, possibly. Um, the bantamweight division in there's another fight in Im- Ibrahim uh, Jalirov against Afan uh, Oroshorables, who's ten and two. Uh, Islam fighting out of uh, of Germany, very strong wrestler. Uh, Rocher Lab is 26 years old, fighting out of France. Uh, with a bit of a submission artist there. Uh, a lot of decisions on his uh, on his record as well. So I'll go for uh, I'll go for Islam on that one. Uh, four and four Marek Hamashuk in the heavyweight division against eleven and four Oleg uh, Zimanovs, whose name I absolutely pronounce perfectly there. Um, uh, Oleg's 29 years of age at eleven and four. He's the type of guy as well who might be able to make a run. Um, good. You know, good boxer, five knockouts, as I said, 29 years of age. Um, good pace as well for a heavyweight. Um, you know, Marek, the other side of it then, is a very good wrestler. Um, he's been training with um, uh, Arek Vorshek, who's fighting in the main event uh, in the lead-up to this, so maybe the, the striking will have, have improved again. One guy I'm very, very interested in seeing in this card is uh, Gino Van Stienis, who's 4-0. and oh. He's the brother of Costello Van Stienis, who fights in... Uh, uh, in Bellator, who's a win over Fabian Edwards, a very good kickboxer. He fought in Glory and things before. Um, very much looking forward to seeing him. He's fighting a guy called Hugo Dux, who is two and out of France. Um, a good grappler, but can do a bit of striking as well. I, I would fancy even seeing us in in that fight, but. Uh, that's definitely one of the ones, you know, the the undercard fights. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. I've seen it's actually the underdog there, plus one or five minus one thirty eight for do. So I think I would be uh, betting on Van Sinus in that one. And in uh, the opening fight of the night is uh, Simeon uh, Karolchik against Arthur Krivich. Uh, Simeon, twenty three years of age, out of uh, out of Poznan. Um, he's a submission artist, can strike as well, but very durable, very good on the ground. And Arthur then is. Uh, also Polish, thirty-one years of age, with um, yeah, powerful striking, but uh, the ability to submit someone as well. So, um, that's that. I, I think this, as I said, this mightn't be the fight card to entice everyone in. This mightn't be the fight card with the big names on it, but it might be a fight card that come towards the middle end of the year. We could have uh, a few names that uh could be in the reckoning for uh, for a few title fights. So that's always fun to uh, to tune into, and always fun to watch. All right, everyone, I will leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and I'll see you all next time.